Fainting is really common, with up to 40% of us experiencing a faint at least once in our lives. When it happens, most people don't get medical help because they recover quickly and forget it ever happened. And this is fine for the best part, as long as it happened for an obvious reason, and we'll talk more about that in a second, and the fact that you don't keep having faints too. Most people that faint, faint before the age of 40, usually as teenagers, and it tends to affect girls more than boys. If it happens after 40 for the first time, it's more likely that it's due to a serious cause. When you faint, people pass out or lose consciousness and fall to the ground. And sometimes you can feel a bit sick or sweaty before it happens. After a few seconds, you usually regain consciousness, but feel a little groggy and tired. It's a pretty major thing for your body to just stop functioning and fall to the ground, but it happens for a good reason. Fainting happens because the brain needs a constant supply of oxygen. If that supply falls below a certain level, even for a short time, we fall to the ground, which makes it much easier for oxygen to get to our brain. The medical name for a faint is syncope, which means cutting off in Greek, and in this case it means a cut to the blood supply to the brain. So what stops blood and oxygen getting to the brain? There are three main causes. One is a common faint. This is by far the commonest cause and it's usually caused by stimulation of one of the main nerves in the body called the vagus nerve, which causes the heart rate to slow down and for the blood pressure to fall. This is caused by not eating or drinking enough, and this decreases the volume of blood in our body and results in less blood going to the brain. Being too hot causes a dilatation of our blood vessels, so it pulls in our lower body and less of it goes to the brain. Being very upset, angry or in severe pain, such as seeing blood or emotional trauma, including panic attacks. These things activate the emotion centers of our brain, which sends a signal to our body to dilate the blood vessels and slow the heart down, which causes less blood and oxygen to the brain. Also, if we're scared or anxious, we release adrenaline as part of our fight or flight response, which gets us ready to run away from threats. In preparation for this, we send blood to our legs, which is fine if we run, but if we don't, there's less blood for the head, and this, you guessed it, increases our risk of fainting. Also, extreme exercise, like being too hot and stressed. Again, less blood to the brain. We can also faint in certain situations, often due to straining, like when we're coughing or peeing or opening our bowels. This temporarily affects the blood flow to the brain too. The second main cause of fainting is when we faint when we stand up. This is called orthostatic hypotension. Normally, when we stand from a sitting position, blood pools due to the force of gravity, but our blood pressure and heart rate regulate itself to prevent this pooling of blood, and it keeps an equal distribution of blood around our body. If this doesn't happen, not enough blood gets to the brain and we faint. And common reasons for this are anything that causes dehydration in the body, such as vomiting, diarrhea, or excess sweating, certain medications, especially those that lower blood pressure too much. We see this a lot in the elderly, and it's one of the commonest reasons for the elderly to fall. Eating a big meal, all of the blood rushes to your tummy after you eat a large meal, and you can't quickly redistribute this elsewhere. That means less blood going to the brain. And certain neurological diseases such as Potts syndrome or Parkinson's disease where the body becomes less able to regulate blood pressure and the heart rate after sitting or standing. And the final cause of fainting is heart problems such as structural and rhythm problems. This tends to be more likely if you have chest pain or you can sense that your heart is pumping before you faint or if it happens during exercise or if there's a strong family history of sudden death. We usually think of fainting as something that happens suddenly without any warning. This isn't always the case. Often before a faint, you may notice things like dizziness or cold skin and sweating or slurred speech or feeling a bit nauseous or changes to your vision. These are all due to different parts of the brain not getting enough blood supply for a short period of time. Some people are more prone to fainting. You can prevent this by lying down with your legs raised or sitting on the ground with your head between your knees, like in a squatting position. This squeezes your legs and buttocks and keeps the blood above the waistline. Squeezing your 
major muscles like this applies a form of counter pressure by raising the blood pressure temporarily. Just sitting on a chair isn't going to do much. Get up slowly from a sitting or lying down position and drinking water or eating something can also help maintain blood pressure. Taking deep breaths, this prevents the adrenaline spikes which can affect blood flow to the brain. And try and preempt the situation if you know you're going to be in a situation that may cause you to feel faint. So for example, if you're at the GP surgery and you're having a blood test, if you know that the sight of blood or needles makes you feel faint, tell us and we can make things easier. Most faints will be a one-off and occur because of one of the common reasons for a common faint. You don't need to seek help from your GP unless you faint and you just don't know what the cause is, or you've recently fainted more than once, or you faint with any particular type of exercise. In this case, beyond checking your pulse and your blood pressure, we may arrange an ECG or an electrical tracing of your heart and consider some blood tests. If you're of childbearing age also, we want to know if you're pregnant or not. The history is really important here. You know, we're interested in the triggers. Has it happened before? Have you fainted before? Is there a strong family history of this? So do have a think about what happened and if you noticed any other symptoms before or after the faint. If faints persist and the cause remains unclear, we may consider a referral to a cardiologist or sometimes a neurologist for further heart and nerve tests. If you're experiencing regular faints, then you also need to be mindful of your ability to drive. I've included a link to more information in the description below, so do have a look at this. I've actually seen more people faint in the street than I have in clinic or in the hospital, so it's good to know what to do if someone faints. The main things are to keep calm. Often people wake up within seconds. If needed, lay people down on their back and raise their legs. This helps to return blood to the heart and try and prevent crowding. If people are in their face, try to keep them back and reassure the person that's fainted and help them to sit up slowly when they're ready and not too quickly. Be aware, there are some circumstances when you should call 999. Do this if someone's having a seizure or fit. Some people may actually twitch a little bit when they faint. and This is part of the body's attempt to return to consciousness and it's normal. But if someone's having a fit and their body is obviously jerking, call 999. If someone's not breathing or they can't be woken up after a minute or they've hurt themselves during the fall, call 999. If you found today's topic useful, don't forget to share with your friends and family and click the subscribe button to stay in the loop. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay healthy.